My name is Kajik Radvinsky, and I'm one of the co-founders of MDFF. Uh, to begin, uh, we'd like to acknowledge that uh, tonight's event is taking place in the treaty territory of the Mississaugas of New Credit and the traditional territory of the Haudenosaunee, the Anishinaabe, and the Huron-Wendat. Uh, we are grateful they have the opportunity to work in the community. As it says on the poster, uh, Barry Hertz said uh, he can 100% guarantee that you've never seen a film like Spice It Up before. Uh, it's, a, it's a film within a film. Uh, there's a spice it up within spice it up. Uh, on one level, it's an absurdist screwball comedy. Uh, a send up of Bring It On shot on GoPros in which seven female friends try to enlist in the Canadian Army um, after they fail to graduate from high school. And then on another level, uh, version two of Spice It Up, it's uh, a weird meta comedy wrapped around um, the previous film. And it's about the terror of showing your work um, in your films uh, to others. Uh, the film's directed by three uh, rising uh, directors, uh, Toronto-based directors, uh, Lev Lewis, whose feature debut, uh, The Intestine, played at VIF in 2016, and uh, Yona Lewis and Calvin Thomas, who co-directed uh, Amy George and The Oxbow Cure. Um, the film also has a cast made up of local critics and filmmakers. In addition to Jennifer Hardy, who is a director and animator, as well as being an actor, uh, film critic Adam Naiman is in the film. Uh, he's here tonight, I think. Albert Shin, also in the building. Jennifer, yeah. Uh, uh, Igor, uh, Sophie Ramvari, Matt Johnson, and a few other cameos, if you look closely. But also, there's an incredible ensemble of uh, seven emerging actors. Um, Shivali Bharat, Samantha Cole, Deja Dixon-Green, Jennifer Graydon, Beck and Willow Moss, uh, Michaela Robertson, and Sarah Sue Valet. I think a few of those actresses are here tonight, too. Um, so yeah, this series is co-presented by Cinemascope. And um, Angela Moreta wrote a really insightful piece about Spice It Up that was published online uh, earlier this week. I'm just going to read a quick quote from it, uh, which I think captures something about the film or the title, um, Spice It Up, or Spice What Up, as Adam Neyman says in the film. Uh, but here, I'm reading uh, <laughs> uh, Angelo. Um, it's a question that might feel painfully familiar to any critic who's wondered where to start with a cryptic text, as well as to any artist who's found themselves translating um, intuitive creative decisions into a more easily digestible sound bites uh, for the literal minded. Um, so I think that captures something about this film and maybe tonight's Q&A afterwards. Um, but yeah, without further ado, please join me in welcoming Lev, uh, Lev Lewis, Calvin Thomas, and Yona Lewis. Hi, folks. Uh, thanks so much. Um, we just wanted to say thank you to MDFF and Kaz and Dan and everybody who put this on, as well as to everyone at TIFF who helped make this happen. Um, we're really thrilled to be screening here for all of you. Um, there's not a theater. <laughs> <laughs> um, this movie's been a long time coming, uh, for better or for worse, um, but we're thrilled that you're here to see it. Um, do we have anything else? I guess we're going to bring up uh, a couple of the cast members afterwards to do the Q&A with us. And we yeah, I mean, it, yeah, as Yona said, this is a, a five year in the uh, year making of production. Um, there's a bunch of cast and there's the, uh, aside from the three crew members uh, up sta uh, on stage, there are like the three or four other crew members that helped us make this movie here as well. So thank you for the support over the years. All right, please join me in welcoming back Lev Lewis, Calvin Thomas, and Yona Lewis. Um, yeah, please invite us. Yeah, we wanted to bring up uh, Jen and the other Spice Girls who are here. Whoever's in attendance, Spice Wise. Spice Becker, Girls. Benny, Deja. There's a lot of us. Yeah, I'm sure uh, we want to open up the questions. I'm sure there's a lot of questions, but maybe I'll kick it off with one and just seeing all these actors up on stage. I'm just, um, 
I'm just wondering how this film got started. What was the first? Was there a script? How did you do the castings? How did you meet everyone? Yeah, well, uh, we 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 found that we've we've reacted to our previous films uh, in trying to figure out what to do next. And so our last film before this uh, starred one person, and she didn't say anything in the entire movie. So we had this idea that it would be fun to like do the complete opposite and have seven people in the movie and have them talk all the time. Uh, and so that's where it started. And we were we we'd seen these early De Palma movies, Hi Mom and Greetings, which are these kind of like little sketch. Uh, pieces that were just crazy and zany and just just wild and they didn't they're just fun to watch and and funny and uh the filmmaking was very experimental and then we we like bring it on too uh so we thought the two could be like uh we sort of wanted to make like a teen dance movie that's sort of where it where it started there there wasn't a script we we outlined we came up with a bunch of ideas maybe sort of 50 to 70 ideas for little sketches and little scenes and then we did a long casting process to get uh, the the original Spice cast, um, and then it was about a 24, 25 day shoot uh, in 2013. And uh, you know, we just experimented and we just played with stuff. And I mean, they, was there a script? Uh, we just no, yeah. We we just uh, we we just got together and and tried crazy stuff, and everyone came up with their own ideas. And uh, yeah, that's kind of how it started. Yeah. Uh, amazing. Um... Yeah, I mean, again, I just wanted to know more about that. Like, so uh, talk about how you guys would improvise, or how many cameras were there? There were GoPros. Were, were different people shooting? Was it GoPros? And Two GoPros. The the idea was to have. Uh we, we like the boss of it all, the Lars von Trier comedy, where he, he shot two cameras and then he had a computer edit it. Uh, like, like, he didn't have a human being edit the footage together. So it had this really strange aesthetic where he'd put the cameras in this cra crazy places and he would just cut between the two of them. Be uh, well, a computer was cutting between the two of them, so it didn't really make sense. So we tried to emulate that style um, and had uh, yeah two GoPros with fisheye lenses uh, at all times. I mean, on improvisation, like Calvin said, we basically had a general structure. It's easy enough if they fail high school and then they are joining the army. We wanted it to be the part before they joined the army. Um, so that was a general structure. And then we just had all of these different scenarios played out. And then we'd kind of get to set with them. And we'd be like, OK, we, these are the things we think we're going to do, like the five things. I think we just kind of tell you guys, like, this is what we're thinking of doing. And then try and refine like as much as we could. you know. But like, I mean, they were just like a fun group to have together. I don't know. Do you guys know anything about the improvisation yeah. process? So we didn't know the bigger picture. <laughs> <laughs> so we never knew what the movie was about. <laughs> We all thought Becca's character was dying <laughs> because Khan, who's here, told us that she thought she was on set and she thought that she had heard that Becca's character was dying. <laughs> yeah, we were all guessing. Nobody knew that Sarah was a terrorist. <laughs> it makes sense, though. Um, <laughs> but I will say that that dance scene always gets me. Like... <laughs> I don't know if you guys remember that, like I learning do. that yeah. dance. Yeah. yeah. And like being given shoes to wear and socks to wear. Yeah. It was... I signed the socks the other day. <laughs> and we got to keep the socks. Who needs to be fair? Well, <laughs> I thought um, improvising was uh, pretty uh, challenging uh, for me because. Um, I just want to let you know that I'm actually a stroke survivor um, in reality. So I did had some um, difficulty. Uh, improvising like like how the way that you see me in the film it's sort of how I mostly um acted like uh like way like I think um many years ago it was mostly like in high school I used to like uh, kind of act like that after I had uh, the stroke so yeah <laughs> okay yeah. yeah I mean so it kind of brings me to the next question of when did it turn into something else or what yeah, so um, so we shot the film in in the summer of 2013, and a little bit, uh, and you'll you can see elements of 2013 throughout it. I mean, there's there's a different prime minister, for example. Um, Grown Ups Two is just playing in the background somewhere, um, and we attempted to sort of make it work in the editing room for a long time, and we kind of loved what we created, but it didn't ever 100% click. It didn't really really work for us. I don't think at the end of the day, um, and so we spent years on and off trying to make it work. We shot a couple other films in that time. And we had this idea of shooting a framework film for it. I don't exactly know where that came from. But we liked what we, the problem we felt with the original was it was one note. It was this loud, crazy note. And we needed some contrast. 
Um, and so we decided to create a framework film that added some contrast. And th that being said, our original idea was to have a seven other girls who are making a film about themselves, um, which was just so complicated and doesn't sound like contrast. Uh, so we decided we'd, we'd worked with Jen before on, on Lev's feature, and we knew she was great. And we thought she would be a really interesting contrast, this one person making a film about seven. And so we started shooting with Jen in late 26, November, November 2016. We shot with her, for, we shot with you for about a year and a half. Like one shoot a month. Yeah, um, slowly over time, and, and that's how it came about. And was that scripted? Or was that? Uh, that that wasn't scripted either. Also improvised. Um, it was si similarly improvised. To some degree, even more so than the spice section. The spice section, we had an outline where we worked from the beginning. Like, we knew what the beginning end was going to be. With Jen's section, with Renee's section, um, we didn't know where we were going. We actually shot scene by scene, would edit it in, would edit the spice stuff around it, and then sort of decide from there what we thought the next moment should be. We obviously had some sense that it was about her going from professor to professor, getting notes, uh, not having a lot of luck. But from there, I think we sort of figured it out piecemeal as we went. Just to add to that, I think that the end scene, which which I, I like quite a bit, uh, was not intended to be the last scene. I think we, we shot it, we thought it was a good idea, and then it came together really well, seeing seeing Jen direct and, and, and having uh, Jenny come back and sort of the fil films merge. And I think Lev, in, when we were cutting that scene, he was like, this could work at the end. We had we had more days planned. We had lots of, a, like, we could still be shooting now, pro but possibly <laughs> if we didn't shoot that last scene. So that's, yeah, that's exactly how it came together. It was just sort of uh, as we needed it or, or as we sort of uh, found another hole, we would shoot a little bit more. Yeah. Any questions? Yes. Uh, so you had uh, the professors and the various sort of like film critics. Oh. So fancy. Uh, so you had the, the professors and the various film critics uh, giving advice, and that was all improvised. But were you sort of inspired by like stories you've heard from other filmmakers, maybe like things that people have said to you uh, or just like the, the general experience of being critiqued? Like how much of your own uh, experience went into that? Yeah, we went to film school, so <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot in there. I think it's partly like an internal monologue that we had about it. Um, we're, we're sort of of two minds of the footage. We're, we're proud of aspects of it, and we're proud of all the performances that they gave and the energy that they have. But we hadn't quite um, taken into some aspects into the consideration, such as, you know, like dynamics or story or plot or these sorts of things um, that they mentioned. So we're sort of torn between it. On like, with the one hand, these people are being kind of condescending and rude and crappy about it, and we don't think that their notes are all that helpful. On the other hand, we kind of think they have a point, at, but they're maybe not making it in the best way possible. So it's like, it's really trying to throw nobody under the bus. It's trying to give a fairly even picture of what the creation process can be, um, which is really weird and difficult, and sometimes you just make things that are not what you expected. Lev didn't go to film school. We're throwing some of the teachers under the bus there. Yeah. I mean, what I find funny is that a lot of them are filmmakers or critics, but then they're also professors as well, like Igor and... Um, we, we just wanted people who could talk about film uh, we, because we knew it was going to be improvised, so we needed someone who could actually say the things with like a little bit of reality behind it. Um, and so we picked people who could talk and uh, could talk about film specifically. And... Uh, I mean, one of my theories when I watch it, did it, did some of this grow out of screening sessions of the first film and dialogue sort of floating around or? A, a little bit, but I, th I think more, as Lev said, it came from our own, we would sit in the edit, every six months we'd come back and be like, I guess we got to work on this a little bit longer. We'd sit there and we'd like try a page one recut of it essentially. And every time we would do that, we would have these conversations about what was missing, what was lacking. And so it really kind of came from our own critiques to some degree. Um, but sort of filtered through the way professors would tell us things back in the day. Uh, yes, uh, Rebecca. Um, I just had a question about uh, directing so many actors, having so many characters in your story. How do you keep track of so many different characters' emotional journeys when you're creating a story like this? Did we? <laughs> well, that, that's why there's three directors. Um, <laughs> Oh my god. No, I mean I don't know. Um, you know I, I thought they were all pretty much on the exact same journey until, Right. Yeah. 
Yes. Yeah, well, I mean, that, that was all <laughs> right. the idea that happened. Yeah. Oh, uh, yes. So we, okay. So, I mean, uh, here's an answer. We had, <laughs> we, we had obviously the shared journey and we had this insane idea that we were going to have seven teenage girls in every single scene of the movie together, which obviously presents scheduling issues and, uh, you know, it's a crazy idea. But we also then wanted a few little sort of breakout segments that would go in there. So there's Sarah, Sue, Valet's um, becoming a terrorist thing if, or whatever. Um, like or Jenny getting a hat. <laughs> Just a side note on the Jenny getting a hat. I, I don't know if anyone even remembers that moment. We fought about this moment where Jenny just, it's like two seconds. Jenny goes and she gets a hat and she says, laugh. I got a hat. Yeah, I got a laugh. I fought for that to stay in and we were watching it this time and I couldn't believe that was still in. I totally forgot. And I was really laughing in my chair. I think it's really great. Yeah. Um, um, but we did want to break off and do, yeah, it's a terrible answer. Yeah, we, we did want to break off to those people and how exactly to do that was, a, you know, a bit of a thing to try and figure out. Um, I mean, we did, we essentially tried to create a little something for each character. And that being said, the original movie was, like, we had a cut of this that was about two and a half hours, like before Jen's stuff was incorporated. So the, everybody here did have a little something that just eventually got whittled down. And we did have to pick certain elements like the FLQ thing that we thought kind of worked their way through in a way that we had to lose other little bits of different people. I mean, to carry on on that note, uh, FLQ, joining the army, uh, these sort of very uh, nationalistic Canadian symbols that are uh, absurd. Uh, yeah. Uh, can you talk a bit about that a bit more about this desire to make a film about girls joining the army or Passchendaele, perhaps, if that... <laughs> Um, Passchendaele used to figure into the film more than it does now. Um, but I think it, it speaks to what Calvin was talking about, which was those early De Palma films, Greetings, Hi Mum. They're these sort of episodic um, essay films, but they're, and they're very much about political, um, the political times that the films are made in. So um, is it Greetings? No, but Greetings is, the, is about um, draft dodging, right? Yeah. So we had this idea that we wanted it to be this sort of, lighthearted teen comedy, but that there needed to be some sort of silly Canadiana political side to it as well. And so we attempted to get that in there as much as possible throughout. Um, I, I don't know if it came from anywhere else. It, did, it, it felt to us like there wasn't, uh, like, uh, we didn't want to, we didn't, I mean, one, we didn't want to hide the Canadianness of it. And as a result, we kind of wanted to go the opposite direction. I mean, I think the very first shot in the spice it up thing is a Canadian flag. Um, so we, we just thought it was, it, I mean, the Canadian flag is kind of a silly looking thing and we thought it looked great to start the silly looking movie. Yeah, it's funny with, with Canadian stuff, like people kind of laugh when you like revel in Canadian memorabilia. Like it's just weird why we think that's funny. But I don't know, I think it's funny just like to focus on Canada so much. Like why would you do it? <laughs> yeah, I feel like that, that echoes as well with, um, I mean, her desire to make this film, and I suppose maybe your own desire. Like, can you talk a bit about, the, again, the motivation you've, you've uh, you and Calvin have made two features and then the sort of the creative sort of liberation of that of, of making a film with such unusual form with GoPros and then and then struggling with it so long <laughs> and I don't know I'm just curious a bit about that journey or that arc yeah. I mean I think we always we, it's changed a little bit now because our, our new movie is it cost a lot more money and, and it, it was a bigger machine it, our first three features uh, were were fast like we it, it's kind of nice not to rely on money and when we when we finished the Oxbow Cure you know it, it grants take a while and you know all this stuff we're sort of all used to now and we're, we're used to the the funding period but uh it, it is very freeing to just buy two cameras and and cast uh, you know on craigslist and mandy and get a bunch of people together and not have much of a crew so that we can be very free in terms of moving and shooting and not spending a lot of money certainly from a production standpoint that's what kicked this off so quickly and then is there something like echoed uh, through Jen's character of then now we've made this and now we have to explain it or the sort of burden of not burden, but like how hard it could be to share work or try to explain something that came from a very pure place, but you didn't really think about literally. Sure. Yeah. I think we're getting we're, you, you sort of get better at it because you're forced to go to festivals and talk about the film and whatever project it is not, not even spice it up. I think you get more confident pitching or, or, or just trying to convey your ideas. But, you know, some people never do. And certainly 10 years ago, you know, we were, if someone said, what's your movie about? We were bumbling and could barely make a sentence, you know, out of it. Yeah, still at the core of every filmmaker, probably that little. Yeah. 
there's, there's nothing as scary as someone saying, like, what's your movie about? And then you have to say. Yeah. Spice It Up was always the title. Uh, mostly the title. Yeah. We, get, we The three of us came like up the, with one I title. I mean, the that... second film or the film around the film is sort of captures something. Again, like name and spice what up or <laughs> change it, make it work. Spice It Up came right away. It was a goofy version of, of, of um, well, we didn't actually get the Spice Girls thing right away. <laughs> we were just dumb around that. It was, it was just bring it on. It just sounded like bring it on. Like it just sounded like sort of whatever it meant something, but you know, it just sounded fun. Um, and so it was called that for years and years and years. And then we got tired of it. Um, and so while we were shooting Renee's section near the end of that, we started calling it, I really love my movie, um, which we thought was a great title and nobody else did. Um, <laughs> We did, a, we did a test screening of this, and Antoine Bourge uh, said, we, we did like a vote, like who likes to spice it up, who likes, I really love my movie. And uh, Antoine said, if you really love your movie, you should call it Spice It Up. <laughs> and that, that, yeah, that, that kind of decided it. Yeah. yeah. We like, okay. uh, I think we have time for one or two more questions. Anyone else from the audience? I've got a question about the music. The score is great. Uh, Lev, you composed it. Uh, can you tell 50 us tracks of music? In? Oh, you put so much music. Yeah, I mean, we were making the movie for five years, um, so I have a really horrendous library of ridiculous music. And at the beginning, especially, I think it, it the music became a bit more serious as the film became more serious. But at the beginning, I was actually just consciously trying to make the dumbest music I could possibly think of. And some of it figures into the movie and some of it doesn't. Um, but it was just me sitting there like thinking, oh, how can I make this sound like the worst MIDI guitar you've ever heard? And I think I sort of succeeded. Um, but there's other things that are a bit more serious. I mean, we wanted kind of like a theme for Jen's character that was like kind of had a bit of an undertow of sadness, but was a bit like rinky dink, like with so that, that opening silly keyboard thing comes in. Um, and there's kind of it's like, a, yeah, it's like a little theme for her that has like some emotion to it. Like the chord changes are emotional um, and fairly like repetitive and a bit like dulling over time, but also just sounds like some little thing that someone could just like play in their backyard or something. So. It was just like a long process. And I mean, we have, if you know, I have a, a ridiculous iTunes library of it. And what we ended up using in the end was a bit like just a last minute decisions in some cases. Yeah. Yes. Oh, two. Great. You said that the, uh, you found the cast on Craigslist and they said they didn't know what was the plot was. I just like want to hear their perspective on, on the entire thing. <laughs> <laughs> I think most of you are Mandy. I won't. <laughs> I'm still on Craigslist. Um, but <laughs> yeah, I thought like um, that just using Mandy, it was, I think it was one of the first years Mandy was like used, I want to say. Um, and everyone was really nice at the auditions. Like it was a nice building. It wasn't something that I felt fearful approaching at all. If that... It's the building that, that you're yeah. in in the movie. Yeah, the condo. Oh, yeah. We, I felt personally very comfortable um, <laughs> <laughs> and did, safe. Did we tell you a basic story? Yeah. 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 Our yeah. yeah. We were all Just Aramidi. Yeah. 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 And you had to go to the dance, which... No, no. I can't dance, yeah. No, no, but I think... <laughs> I think <laughs> you yeah. Yeah. No, we all did. I think mean, that was a part of the thing, yeah. yeah. <laughs> did they pay your subway fare? No. 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 Uh, <laughs> 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 the but granola bars and and ca and cashews at the end of the movie is very and the lack of TTC that's very uh, that's very meta. Yeah, I mean it's really. I, I found like a beautiful scene too. All, you're in high school now. You're in university. I mean, I'm just curious. What, what was it like being on this journey with them and, and seeing the final product years later? Or tonight is tonight the first time seeing it, or do you uh, see for, it for Deja and Jenny? I think yeah, first time. For me, it was really exciting. Um, you know. <laughs> yeah, it was a good time. I love the movie. Very funny. Um, <laughs> love seeing you on stage. <laughs> um, it feels like a really long time ago. A lot of things surprised me. I don't know about you guys, but I forgot half of the things we shot. I did not know they existed. Um, I was in high school, actually in high school, when we filmed this. Um, and now I'm still an actor. A better actor, hopefully. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it was really exciting. 
thieving. I remember like um, one of my friends here tonight, she talked about me showing up. She talked about me showing up to parties in grade nine and being like, yeah, I'm shooting a movie. <laughs> like nobody knew what we were doing. <laughs> and that's it. On that note. Yeah, I was in high school too when we did this. And then I ended up in Adam Naiman's class um, later, like two years after. And he had seen the original cut, but I didn't know the context. So we just started talking one day and it turned out that he had seen a movie I was in, but was also my professor teaching me film. So talk about <laughs> oh, I was gonna say, um, yeah, it was five years ago and I, it brings back a lot of memories. So I think that's really um, like one, seven, seven, seven years, years ago. ago. Oh my God. No, no, no. no 20. I was 15. Six, six. Six years ago, okay. I guess the average. Okay, so it was six years ago, but I think, I don't know. So like we have been keeping in contact like in the beginning. It was like, oh, like, you know, like how's it going? That kind of thing. And so it's nice to see everyone here and yeah. We, someone passive aggressively added the three of us to like a a Facebook group that 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 yeah that all of them had and and it was just posts about like what happened to those guys where's the movie have you heard anything and then and then we finally finished it I they didn't know about the restructuring with with Jen and stuff and then I and then we finally posted I think we wrote all of you being like hey long time no see. Uh, it's gonna play Vancouver. This is like five years later, and then on on the Facebook things, people were like, "Did you get the email? I don't believe it. Like, there's there's no way. They're like that movie's dead." Uh, so, we that honestly like kept us going. I think we were like, you know, that's why we never gave up. We were like, we gotta like, oh, they're they know us. They're watching us. We gotta finish this movie. We have time for one more. I saw a hand in the back. Yeah. Um, quickly, what's next for everybody on stage? We, we have a, a new movie playing TIFF um, called White Lie. Um, that will be here in September. What are you working on, Jen? I'm, I'm sort of uh, currently working on um, uh, sort of like a comic uh, project. Uh, and I'm going to be making it... Um, Somewhere like um, my old uh, animated film that I made since, how long was it, like 11 years ago? Because a um, long time ago, I uh, produced um, a short animation uh, called uh, WSIM, WSIM, What Suffered Inside Me. And it was uh, based on uh, my struggles and uh, my depression that I was, uh, I was having problems with uh, in school. And um, it's, 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 yeah, it's mostly based on my invisible disability that... Um, uh, so I'm not, really, I'm not very good at explaining this because um, of because I'm having um, a disability called aphasia because it's hard for me to get um, a bunch of sentences out and explain it. But yeah, um, but yeah, lately I am working on a comic that I want to like continue uh, working um, a bit. Uh, should I say it? Are, are you easier to explain it for me, or I don't know. Well, you do, I think there's two projects that you're working on, right? Like yeah, there's, there's a two comics. Um, yeah. So because uh, animation is one of Jen's um, major forays, because she, you're, you, I don't know if you mentioned it, but you also went to OCAD, yeah. right? So, so OCAD yeah, a lot, a lot of Jen's previous works were uh, awarded, um, and a lot of it was uh, animation, stop motion style. So you want to get back into that, mm -hmm. and then also um, because on um, on the short uh, WSM, what suffered inside me, it. Um, I was uh, planning to make the story uh, like a 20-minute uh, animation, but because uh, the thesis, because I didn't had enough uh, time to finish the thesis, I ended up changing into a, a like a three-minute uh, short uh, musical uh, animation. So that's why I want to um, um, make the co the comic to explain a bit more that I want to sh to sh ah to show. Can I mention one yes. of the ones you show me? So um, um, just so people understand, I'm here to help Jen be understood and also for Jen to understand like things too. More of the too. story, uh, a bit more of the story about my life and, and things. Yeah, because as time goes on and uh, Jen gets involved in other projects and she also tries to, st uh, she steps out into the workforce as well. Um, her experience continues to be different in the way that like I'm turning 30 and so things are going to be a little different for me for different reasons, but so as time goes on, there's more that Jen wants to do to uh, elaborate on her experience uh, struggling with the um, with, with her aphasia because it's not like 
it's not like it's over, you know, I mean, she, she still has to continue on with her disability. And so as your life changes, that also means that you want to create new projects to reflect those changes. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I'm directing the engineering musical. It's at Hard House Theater in March this year. Um, <laughs> Um, it's like sketch comedy um, and musical parody numbers about being a young person in Toronto, especially being a like university student. So when you guys can relate, come out to, uh, yeah, I'm gonna, yeah. <laughs> so like Jenny, um, I finished at U of T um, as well. And um, acting for me, this is actually one of my first acting projects and it was just a lot of fun. Like as it started out as a hobby, it's definitely still gonna be a part of me um, and I love it. And so for the next future plans, I guess, is more so you know, career and work in terms of like my degree, but we'll definitely look into what other opportunities I can do next. I'm joining the army. Um, <laughs> no, uh, I graduated from U of T and now I am acting and singing and writing my own stuff. Um, I recently graduated from NTS in Montreal and I'm currently at Stratford Festival, opening a show tomorrow called The Crucible. Come out and try to see it if you can. Um, I, I'm about to go into my last year at University of Toronto. Um, I have a short that I acted in coming up at TIFF, directed by Sophia Banzaf, who was a helper on this help with casting. That's how I wrote it. And <laughs> um, I'm also directing a script workshop, a stage reading at Luol Massey Theatre, September 21st. Uh, so yeah, we're all out of time, but please join us around the corner for a drink in the Bell Blue Room. Um, but a lot more to talk about and unpack about the film. But yeah, uh, thank you to the team and cast and crew behind Spice It Up. Yeah, thank you all for being here. Yeah, thanks, guys.